Yes, welcome to the Biz Communication Show. I'm your host, Bill Lampton, every week bringing you a communication expert whose advice, strategies, and tips will help both you and me in our own business and professional life. Today, it's a terrific privilege to bring someone who I've known and admired for quite a few years, Jeff Dantzler, known to many of his fans as JD. Jeff is a radio television personality, also a writer. He's a longtime uh, media personality with the University of Georgia, and then it includes the Georgia Bulldog Network, the pregame and postgame football games. That's where I met him and the host of Sunday Brunch, working alongside in all of these, his famed Georgia legend friend, the kicker, Kevin Butler. Jeff has devoted his journalistic skills to three Olympic games, so he definitely has worked internationally. He has announced, in addition to football, Georgia baseball and women's basketball and other sports, and I would add a personal note here that along with all of these qualifications, Jeff is beloved by his friends and fans because he's a very approachable guy. He's a very friendly guy. And to use a word which I think is the high compliment, he is definitely authentic. I have had the privilege of seeing him before football games on a number of occasions over the years. And there's always that wonderful greeting as though we'd been friends since childhood. So join me now in welcoming Jeff Dantzler. Hello, Jeff. Bill, Mr. Lampton, Dr. Lampton, it's an honor to be with you here. And uh, I used to always say when I would give Coach McGill introductions at Bulldog Clubs and yours was way too kind, he would say, that's great. I can't wait to hear what I have to say. And I do want to, we're on a communication show. People might say, why are you sitting outside? Well, our 15-month-old dog, Tilly, uh, decided to uh, – intrude rudely on take one so I, I guess she felt neglected this morning she was barking like crazy so here we are in beautiful five points in the outdoors but it really is an honor uh bill for me to be on with you i've admired you and everything that you've done and again it's it's one of those things i, I guess we just instantly became fast friends so it's it's great for me and I, I thoroughly appreciate you having me on thank you thank you for your kind words one thing we can add here jeff is that in North Georgia, there are not many days recently we could have done outdoor <laughs> broadcasting. In fact, we caught a break today. <laughs> I live in Gainesville, Georgia, as you know, and I dubbed this place Rainsville, Georgia, quite a few weeks ago. We, uh, I, I told somebody yesterday the guy who would go broke in this town would be the guy selling sunglasses. So thank heavens for the wonderful outdoor setting. Jeff, uh, to start on a lighter note, and yet one that we can learn a, le a communication lesson from, let's talk about the bloopers that journalists make, whether it's in print or whether it's on television or whether it's on radio. I'll start by telling one of mine. In a previous career, I was vice president of Columbia College in Columbia, South Carolina. Every year, we had a huge banquet that as vice president, I emceed. We were honoring alumni. Four of those who were there were to receive the prestigious medallion from Columbia College. I introduced each one of the recipients, and in introducing one of them, she had written a play about the college, and I mentioned that. All of a sudden, everybody in the audience just broke up laughing. I wondered, have I said something profane accidentally? or what happened. So when I sat down, one of the college officials said to me, Bill, the reason they're laughing is that the lady wrote the play in 1949, but you announced that she'd written it in 1849. <laughs> well, Jeff, she was rather elderly, but she wasn't quite that elderly. <laughs> the good news is she had a good sense of humor. We were friends and we both chuckled about that. What, uh, what 
type of, um, I know like uh, me, you have many of them. What's, what's a blooper you might think about that's sticking in your mind? Well, that's a good one there, but I know for me, and first of all, I'm, I'm going to come with a defense on it there. We were playing baseball at Missouri, and their booth was cut in half. It's very small. You have to, as they say, for Fenway Park, when you get a bad ticket behind one of those old poles, you have the ob view, the obstructed view. So we've got a couple of obstructed views, and we had a kid named Stephen Wren. He hits his drive to left center and I'm kind of peeking and looking and they had a smooth center fielder named Jake Ring and it's, it's hard to see to say this ball is out of here and Dave Johnston my my uh broadcast partner who does such a great job he looks at me and he comes like oh I saw your ring makes the catch and he was he just kind of smoothly went out and caught it there so I, I just I apologized a couple times I felt terrible and, and we won the game and I told Steven on the bus after the game I said well Steven I gave you credit for a home run it was a terrible mistake but the good news is he hit a home run to lead off the next game. So maybe I was foretelling a bit, but we all in this business, you want to be perfect when you do a broadcast, a show, a game, anything. And just to make a mistake like that, I felt like the biggest dope. But, hey, you got to be able to laugh at yourself, right? You better do it whether you're in broadcasting or any kind of business. In fact, this is a great communication lesson here, Jeff. You and I both know this, and that is, don't try to be perfect because people don't want perfect. You'd look like a robot. And again, laugh at your mistakes when you make them. I serve as a speech coach for business leaders. And when I do, I hand them a sheet of paper with some guidelines on it. And one of the guidelines is don't try to be perfect. And I grossly misspell the word perfect just to show <laughs> that you, you don't, people don't want perfection. It's not real. And you and I, both, and I'm sure many of our viewers and listeners have gone to YouTube, type in TV bloopers, and you'll have a wonderful evening laughing at all of those, which some of them made the air and some did not in movie. They, they call them outtakes. But as you and I both learn, laugh at your mistakes and keep on moving heads. Good lesson in that, and as well as good humor. Uh, Jeff, you know, sometimes people would look at what you do professionally. So totally engaged in sports and some business people might say, well, you know, I just don't have time for that. It's mm -hmm. irrelevant to what I do. Um, it would take time away from my work. So not only do I not go to football, bas basketball, baseball games, uh, track meets or anything, I don't watch it on television. I don't read the news about it. Why do you re react to that, Jeff? If somebody said those things to you, well, everybody has, I think, in, in their minds, something that, that is entertainment for them. And I think what, what's so wonderful about sports, and I think especially college sports, is it, it's the great release. And it's, it's a great connector. So for a lot of people who are you know, in these very hard and stressful jobs, Monday through Friday, whatever it may be, with families taking up a lot of time, when the Bulldogs play, just using Georgia for an example, that's a time that everybody can come together, and for those three or four hours, your focus can go on that. Now, for a lot of us, that, that Georgia football is more stressful than our real jobs are. And the other thing about it, I think especially for college football, is that sports is a great unifier. It brings people together. And I know I have some very close friends, and hey, now, now that I've, I've been married a little less than a year now, and um, – you know, life can, can kind of get in the way. And just the fact that, that for these football games, I get to see friends that I used to spend so much time with, I used to spend so much time with, and, and you get to see them for those six or seven Saturdays, and you create all these wonderful memories. So I think that's another great thing with sports. And there, there, there was something else. And, and I think with sports, there's a great purity to it and that in the end it's your results it doesn't matter if you're black white purple green whatever it may be uh, bear bryant had had a great quote one time when he said sam cunningham did more for integration in the south than martin luther king did and i think some people took that as an insult but it, it wasn't meant to be there's a pretty famous story that uh, when, when alabama was trying to get black players in and the sec was trying to integrate he called his his friend a John McKay at Southern Cal and said, hey, I want you guys to come play us in Birmingham. And he said, well, that's fine, but you got to return the game here. And he said, all right, 
but but you got to come here first with Sam the Bam Cunningham. And Alabama didn't have any black players. And Sam Cunningham scored four touchdowns. And USC beat him. I think it was 42-21. I think we all know how that story ended. The next year, Alabama started recruiting black players. So to me, just for, from that end, sports is a great unifier. It brings people together. I, I know a, a great man, Billy Henderson, here at Clark Central, when, when Athens was going through some racial strife in the early 1970s, he always told the story of, of his first playoff team in 1975. And Coach Henderson was such a great inspiration. We, we had uh, rich hands holding hands with poor hands, black hands holding hands with white hands. And, and it was just really a moving and wonderful story. So I think all of those aspects, sports is just a wonderful, wonderful thing. And you don't have to necessarily be, be a nut about it or overly passionate just to at least appreciate what it means to so many people and the, the importance it has on, on both local levels and I, I think nationally. I mean, just l look at how important Jackie Robinson was. It's another great example. I, I underscore all of that uh, absolutely and enthusiastically. And I think, for example, of uh, a golfer, when you, when you put that peg in the ground to hit the first tee shot, the ball doesn't care <laughs> what <laughs> race, religion, height, weight, gender doesn't care at all. In fact, I remember when Lee Trevino thought maybe he'd played too long on the senior tour, Champions Tour now it's called, he told his wife he thought he was going to quit. He was getting too old. His wife looked at him and said, your clubs don't know your age. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is a great unifier. Sports not only can be, it is in so many ways. Now, another thing I would add to that as to why business people should be at least aware of, interested in, and knowledgeable about sports, whether they go to the events or not, is this is a conversation piece. This is something that you can have in common with a lot of people. I was in professional fundraising for 20 years. And one of the things that I definitely wanted to know about a prospect I was going to visit would be what sports are they interested in? Because if you're both interested in the same sport, that's a wonderful common ground. And one more thing to add there is, gosh, Jeff, look at the entertainment value for business people who want to cultivate clients and friendships and who want to network and get referrals. You invite somebody to your skybox at University of Georgia football game, they're not going to ignore your email a couple of weeks later. No, you're exactly right. And, and I think just, just using an example, uh, I, I met a gentleman just, I was up, I think, with the Lady Dogs at a Final Four. And I met a gentleman who was from Milwaukee. He was a really nice guy. And I said, oh, you big Brewers fan. And you know, so we sat there and talked about Harvey's Wall Bangers and 1981 Milwaukee Brewers. And, and, and then, yeah, you've got like an instant friendship, which also is another good lesson. Like I always read the great, late, great Dan Jenkins, who just passed away, wrote, you want to stay popular at parties? talk about the other person there and I've always agreed with that but th that is something I, I think for anybody if you are a sports fan you can find a common ground and then also if you want to go back you start talking about bringing kids into the mix you know just about every kid plays little league in some form or fashion so I think that's another thing that uh, you know as John Kennedy said you know back during the the height of the Cold War and the Cuban Missile Crisis. We all share the same earth. We all love our children. Well, I think that's another great example of that, but definitely. And that was very smart of you. You find out who you're about to talk to. Hey, if they're a big Oakland Raiders fan, you're going to talk Kenny the Snake Stabler, and you'll be there all day long. And like you said, that email will get returned pronto. And you can be very observant when you go into their office. Look at uh, yeah. if they've got a golf trophy, if they've got a – uh, Georgia Bulldog, uh, Big G up there, if they got photos of themselves with a coach, you've got a starting point right there. It's, it's a great way to get rapport with people. Now let's talk for a minute, and our time is, is running a little short, and when, you know, time flies when you're having fun. But let's talk for a little bit, in just a couple of minutes, about the field of journalism. There are many people now who would say, well, this is not uh, a profession to go into any longer. Magazines are folding, newspapers are closing, or 
maybe uh, publishing fewer times per year. Radio is really, for the most part, no longer local radio because if you cut on your radio at noon, probably the rest of the day is going to be some type of syndicated radio people. If somebody were to say to you, maybe a, a, an aspiring journalism student, it's just not a good field to go into anymore, Jeff, how would you respond to that? I, I say, well, you, you might be right about that because it's very hard to get, to, to get rich. Um, but I, I think if you've got a passion for it, if you really love it, you do get to do something that you love. And the old saying is, what is it? If you, uh, if you love your work, you'll, you'll never work a day in your life. And, and I kind of feel like that. I still say I'm 46. Well, at some point I, I've got to get a grown ups job. But the, the, the difference is I think now, and I grew up magazines, newspapers, TV and radio too. The, 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 they're still being written about their stories being written, their games being broadcast, their topics being covered. You just might have a new medium. And, and I'll give you an example. Uh, Dave and I always say, Hey, tweet us during the baseball games. We had on opening day this year, tweets from either 12 to 15 different States. And a guy was listening to the Georgia baseball game in the Dubai international airport. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. So that's, and he's listening on his phone. So that's part of it too. There is still content. There's always going to be that. It's just the, the way the, the method, the device that you might get it now, it's really changing and it's going fast. I mean, just the fact bill that you and I can sit here and do this over this, this app called zoom it's amazing. So that's where it kind of for like an old dinosaur like me, who I am a, a technologically, I would say illiterate at best, kind of keeping up with, with the changing stuff and, and the changing formats, I think is important. But there's always going to be a place for someone to write the story and someone to tell the story. You might just not read about it in a newspaper or magazine anymore. You'll probably just read about it on your cell phone. The medium has changed, but the it message has. is still important. Yes, sir. Jeff, yes, sir. a quick answer on this one. Let's suppose that I were a business leader and that tomorrow you were going to interview me. But today we're having coffee and we're talking about the interview. Real quickly, what are three or four tips that you might give me so that I could succeed as a guest? I, I think number one, I think for the interviewer, I, I think you just ask the basic questions. And, and I think for someone who is doing the interview, you let the interviewee be the star. And, and I think if you've got someone you have a good rapport with, I'm, I don't consider myself a good interviewer. My wife thinks I, I am, but she's very kind to say that. But for me, I, I don't give the classic journalism interview. I think it's more of a conversation. And I think that relaxes the interviewee some. And uh, whether you're the interviewee or, or the interviewer, I think letting the other person shine is great. Listen, Johnny Carson is probably the TV icon of all time. Uh, you know, Jerry Seinfeld, uh, Seinfeld's the greatest TV comedy ever. They weren't afraid to let the other people be the star. And, and in my opinion, that's a big reason why they were both so successful. Well put. Jeff, I know that those who have viewed and listened to our program will want your contact information. So please share that with us now. Uh, yes, sir. It's uh, Jeff Dantzler, J-E-F-F-D-A-N-T-Z-L-E-R, 1710 at msn.com. 1710, that was the score of the Sugar Bowl when we beat Notre Dame. So I'll change that when we win our next national championship. And I'll give you my phone number. Anybody can call me, 706-248-8051. And it's, uh, it's just been an honor being with you, Bill. And I'm sorry that Tilly uh, interrupted us and we had to do about three or four takes. She was a bad girl, so she's sulking in her crate right now. Well, as I said about your dog, how about them dogs? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you'll have me again, Bill. I, I really, really, really enjoyed it. You're just a wonderful man and you do so much for so many people. And I think that that's another, you know, good tip. When you can go out there, you make somebody else feel good, you improve another person's day every day. I think that's a great way to try and live. Bless you, my friend, and believe me, yes, you're going to get invites again to be on the Biz Communication Show. And since Jeff has given his contact information, I'm glad to share mine. Bill Lampton, the Biz Communication Guy. So logically, 
My website is biz, B-I-Z, bizcommunicationguy.com. I invite you to go there. You'll find my contact information. Sign up for my online newsletter. Look at the services that I provide for corporations and for leaders. Jeff, any closing comments as we wind down our conversation? Well, I just, I just want to again reiterate that it was great being on with you and uh, you know, what, what you do helps so many people because in the end, what we all do, business, everyday life, whatever it is, it's all about communication. And, and, and I do think that the, the more stuff you can do face to face, the better it is because I think as we all live in such a text and, and email society, things can get lost in translation. As I always say, and I think, Bill, you being a married man, the word whatever is one of those like, hey, where do you want to go for dinner? Oh, whatever. Or but the tone of that whatever or whatever, you know, whatever is <laughs> one of those words. If you get it in a text, you're thinking, oh, boy, is this good, bad or indifferent? So I think the better we can communicate openly, I think the better off we all are. Well, you have mastered that. <laughs> I don't know about that. You certainly have. And again, it, it was just great to be on with you, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you, my friend. And thanks to all of you again for being with us on the Biz Communication Show. Please be with us next week when once again, we will bring a communication expert who will bring you tips, strategies, and advice that will help your business grow and glow. I'm Bill Lampton, the Biz Communication Guide.